welcome again to the NPTEL course on storage systems. In the previous class, we started looking at um, some problems relating to commit protocols and we looked at two phase commit and three phase commit. Again to refresh your memory, we had also tried to understand the difference between commit protocols versus consensus protocols. So, so we started looking at commit protocols. So, I will just briefly try to summarize two phase and three phase hmm, especially as why they have the problems that we discussed. If you look at two phase, we mentioned that it gets into a blocking situation. Okay. Why is it happening? We will just quickly look at it one more time. So, this if you look at two phase commit, you will see that up till this point it is all preparation. All this while you are just preparing to do something. The only time when you actually do when you really make some movement is at this point. So, when you get ready from all, you decide you decide that okay, now I can actually make the move. That is previously it was sort of uncertain, not clear what is going to happen, but now it is all clear, I am going to make a move. Okay. So, this is the critical point in some sense. Okay. Now, similarly, when you look at three phase commit, you try to avoid that situation, and that is why you get into a pre commit situation. In the two phase commit, you actually do this flushing of your the, the coordinator flushes his state and there is no way to go back. Here what he has done is he decides I, I cannot really do it right away because I might get into a blocking situation. So, he says okay, I am going to see how the situation develops. How am I going to do it? I am going to tell everybody what I am going to do. Okay. Again I will look at it one more time in a slight different way so that you can see the difference between the two situations. Okay. So, as I mentioned before in two phase commit, you get a ready T from all then you commit. Again just let us understand what commit means. Again as I mentioned two phase commit and three phase commit are connected with those kinds of systems for which there is persistent state. Okay. These are distributed file systems or uh, distributed databases or etcetera. Okay. So, when each party has done something they have some state that has to be flushed to disk. Okay. So, this actually means what what uh, what exactly are we meaning by this? We flush the transaction and commit the state okay, and then only we send the message. As I mentioned before, you cannot send the message first followed by commit. Otherwise, then the coordinator code crash in between and you already informed that you are doing it, but you are unable to flush it to disk your state. That is why it always has to be flush the transaction that is you make it stable on the stable storage and commit the state. You you made a irrevocable step, step you have taken. Then only you send the message. So, the other parties know what you that you already done something. And other parties better follow what I am going what I am doing. Okay. So, the basic issue is that if you have committed it cannot be unrolled because if all the let us say buffers etc have been taken back etc etc. So, there is no way to go back you are committed. Okay. You cannot be daily dialing too much. Okay. If you keep doing it you get into a at some point you have to actually make a transition. Okay. So, this is the place where it happens. Okay. So, our problem is that having committed before I send a message I can also still crash. So, because that happened nobody really knows what the coordinator did. That is why I get to the blocking situation. I hope this part of it is clear. Okay. And basically the thing is from your FLP result you remember the result which I mentioned about the Fisher Lynch Patterson result. What does it say? In a distributed system, consensus is not possible even it is one faulty processor that is the exact statement of the theorem. Okay. And basically this is what exactly that is why the FLP result applies here. So, you have to commit then only you can send the message, but it is possible that after having sent a committed yourself nobody knows what you did. That is why you have the FLP result applying in this case. Now, what is the situation with three phase commit? Here, 
I do not want to get into situation here. So, what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, tell myself ok, I do not want to press the transaction and commit a state to avoid a two phase commit block ok, I want to avoid this somehow. So, what I am going to do I mean inst instead inform others on what I plan to do. The quantity is slightly wanting to uh, not take any chances of getting blocked. So, it is trying to inform others. So, now what happens is that if you take this particular stance unfortunately get stuck into the two generals kind of problem. What is this problem? As we, as we mentioned before what is this particular problem? There are two generals and in between them there is a enemy and both the generals have to coordinate to attack then at the same time otherwise they will lose. Now, our problem is that any messages etc that have to be sent have to go to enemy territory and the messages can be lost etc ok and there is no solution to this problem ok. Now, we can see why that is the case because now we can map the coordinator to one general and all rest of the guys to the second general ok. Now, because of this you are not flush your state and you are trying to make the two parties agree before the coordinator flushes his state ok. So, essentially you are stuck into this two generals problem now ok, there is no way to escape from this ok. So, the only escape we have is from an engineering point of view we can say I optimistically try to solve the two generals problem till somehow I succeed. So, in a sense I am not live ok, I am correct but I am not live. Here I am blocking, here also I am consistent but I block here I instead of blocking I keep trying things I might you might say I am in a I am blocked here, but I am here could be in a live block situation ok I keep on trying new things things do not work out and I keep on trying ok. So, the way I can do it is by having a leader election to try new coordinators I keep trying it till somehow I succeed ok. Of course, from this you can see there are two problems one is that the leader election itself is a stumbling block because if you look at it what is the leader election all about? It is all about trying to figure out who is the leader again it is seems it seems to be similar to our commit problem ok. Only thing is that you may have slightly lesser stringent conditions for this part ok. So, again you will notice one interesting thing about three phase commit ok. As I mentioned uh, earlier when we are talking about uh, the difference between atomic commit and consensus, we also mentioned the following atomic commits attainable only on the assumption that the process failures are benign. Basically, because every party in the who in the protocol right, they have some state that has to be carried forward in case they commit, ok. If you have any Byzantine failures that means that you really cannot do this atomic commit just not possible ok. So, there are situations where when I am talking about things like little election right. Here when I am doing it taking a little election I do not really necessarily have some kind of uh, state that has to be kept forward where I do not have to save it for example, I do not have to flush those kind of state when I am doing little election. So, one can argue that this is slightly simpler than atomic commit ok, because I do not have some state persistent state that has to be made persistent as part of the protocol in case I agree on something ok. So, in a sense you can see the atomic commit finally can devolve to a consensus protocol as a sub protocol inside it ok. And this kind of stuff is also important in other contexts. For example, if I am a there is a storage system and uh, I need to keep replicas multiple replicas and there are two types of uh, there are two messages I send and I have to send it to two sets of replicas and it is important for me that all the messages I send the sets of messages I send they are received in the same order in which I sent to each of the replica sites ok. So, here also there is some problem relating to how to make sure that all of them agree 
that all the messages have been received and the same order it was sent out. Okay. So these things do not have a persistent state as part of the problem to be solved. Okay. In case it does not happen, you can again restart again, you can retry one more time, it is not a problem. Okay. So it turns out consensus problem is a, has a slightly simpler uh, aspect to it. If things fail, you can retry. Okay. Whereas in the case of atomic commit kind of situations, you really have to flush the state that has been um, accumulated as part of your whatever transaction you are doing. So, it is a slightly different problem. So, what we will do is now we will start looking at instead of looking at the kind of commit protocols for which position state is so important, we will try to look at closer to consensus kind of problems. And one important such solution is, is called Paxos. So, we will try to look at this particular problem and uh, this was uh, solved by the famous uh, computer scientist by the name Lamport, Leslie Lamport. It was also solved by other parties previous to this, uh, but he had a very colorful way of talking about it. So, I think uh, the word Paxos, etc., have stuck. Okay, but two or three other researchers also have uh, come with similar solutions before. So let's look at what this particular algorithm is about. You have clients, proposers, acceptors, and learners. Clients are those which are waiting for some, um, for example, some resource which is shared by multiple parties. For example, somebody wants a write lock in a distributed file system. Since it is a write lock, only one party should be allowed to be given this permission. Okay. So, clients are those who request this kind of request. Okay. And we do not care who actually gets the request as long as only one person gets. Again, this example of mutual exclusion. Okay. And so, clients make requests for mutual exclusion and they wait for a response. Okay. Then you have a set of proposers who attempt to figure out who should be given access to the lock for example, so that the party who should get it is the value. For example, if 5 people are waiting for it, you can say number 5 or number 2. Okay. So, proposers are basically the parties, there will be a few of these proposers. Essentially, the reason why you have multiple proposers is that in case there is a failure of proposer, the other proposers who know that this particular request has been made. Okay. You have proposers so that you remember that a request has been made, even if some of the proposers die. Okay. And they try to figure out what value should be decided upon. So, there are 5 people waiting to get a right, right block, you should say one of them gets it. We do not care who, okay, but one of them should get it. And uh, by collecting acceptances from majority of acceptors. Okay. So, proposers are saying what value should be proposed and there will be a majority of, there will be acceptors who will essentially says okay, it is fine to go with 4, 5, whatever. Okay. And then once it has been accepted, it is possible that there are other failures in the system and you cannot remember what really happened and that is basically ratified by learners. And the learners are basically the party who are some kind of replicate information somehow, so that the clients can get back the information. Okay. So, it is a more a very general model, often times many of these things are co-located, but uh, for the purposes of this thing, we can assume there are various types of entities in the system. Clients make requests, propose a sort of rumor what can requests have been made, so that even if, uh, if there is only a single proposer, it might, uh, if it dies, it is a problem. So, that is why there are multiple proposers. Except of the parties who actually have some state and they will try to remember what happened in the past also. Proposers will not have any state, persistent state, but acceptors will have. So, in case some thing has been decided in the past, they can look up the state and say, yes, this particular thing was asked, some bad stuff happened, but I still know what happened in the past. I can provide that. 
that's why these guys have state position state and those are the parties who actually can this some kind of a replication of that information about what was actually agreed upon okay so only one proposal can get votes of majority of acceptors okay so essentially there is some kind of quorum here here i am talking about majority but it can be some type of quorum okay so our problem is that if you look at it what was the problem in the previous case you what you were trying to do was to do a leader election suppose you say the leader election is a stumbling block so instead of doing leader election i basically say let anybody start it doesn't matter who okay i don't try to go through a leader election algorithm per se i will say anybody who sees that something is stuck he can proceed he is not going to do a leader election okay that's a that's a basic thing that taxos does okay so essentially what you have to do is when there are more than multiple parties who suddenly say that okay i see some problem let me start a new round of saying that let the value be this particular i'm going to restart the protocol so that a new value can be decided okay so if there are multiple proposals it turns out that you can wait for each other and uh, therefore there can be some situation similar to deadlock that are seen so to break those things you can proposers can effectively restart a protocol by if you see that the previous proposals previous attempts to negotiate a value were not making headway then you can just drop them and restart it okay and uh, if in the past some acceptors had decided on some values okay and those values cannot get a majority if it is very clear that those values will not get a majority then you can ask the acceptors to flush their state and to start a new round and then try to see if they can come to a new consensus again okay so this is a high level idea about what is being done essentially it's a, it is slightly different from paxos sorry slightly different from three phase commit protocols in multiple ways one is that commit protocols there is an issue about state that has to be flushed persistent state okay which is critical as part of, as part of the uh, let us say as part of the protocol here we need to have persistent state only to decide upon the value but we don't care about what value we actually pick up in case something doesn't work out i'm willing to go with a new value it doesn't matter whereas in the commit protocols i can't do that okay for example if a hotel has been booked and we are trying to proceed that what hotel i booked is important i cannot just let it drop it okay unless there is no agreement at all and then we have to drop it okay if somebody is trying to move forward and they have already said that this particular hotel is important you cannot drop it okay so there is some difference in the two types of problems so here what we are doing is we can have without going through leader election we try to restart the protocol again and one way to do it is by making sure that if any intermediate if in the past some people have decided on some particular values if we can sh show that those values cannot be accepted by a majority then it is easy to drop them okay that's basically the idea hmm? so again this i'm going to do it in uh slightly um and two or three attempts to make sure this is very clear so i'll first let's take a high level idea okay so before taking a vote a proposer checks us, checks by sending a prepare and message to all acceptors n is a proposal number okay in a sense one can say it's like let process 5 get the lock okay let node number get particular lock number something okay those that, that's basically proposal okay okay so that's a proposal so basically there are various proposals in the system it will be monotonically increasing let us say hmm? an acceptor responds the promise never to accept any pro proposal with a number less than n okay so basically the idea is that older proposals don't get suddenly ratified okay there are some dormant or 
dead protocol uh, dead proposals which should not be accepted so basically some guys proposing some n and there are various acceptors who will if they accept this particular n they will basically say that i'm going to whatever i've done in the past okay i will make sure that i don't accept anything less than n okay okay that is i will if some because the reason why i have this problem is that there could be multiple proposers doing at the same time okay so they might be sending something else also so their number might be less than n so in which case i am going to promise saying that i will not accept those okay and then in addition since he has got persistent storage in case in the past he has accepted a proposal okay he will send the highest number proposal that the acceptor has accepted okay so the proposer can substitute this value for its own in case previous value was in fact ratified so our problem is that some new guy has come in he is trying to propose some value but it turned out that in some previous uh, situation a value actually was proposed and it was accepted by a majority but before it could be uh, let us say uh, communicated to everybody the proposer himself died okay so no so thing is that in some sense a majority was found but the presiding officer died or something of that kind okay so now if that is the case a new presiding officer comes in he sees that he is able to figure out by talking to most of the people that in fact some particular thing was already accepted so if the acceptor sends back what proposal number that was accepted in the past then the proposer can see if the majority actually got it in which case he can say okay instead of proposing a new value i will take whatever was accepted in the past okay again we'll go through it one more time to make sure this is clear okay so if the proposer receives a response from majority of the acceptors the proposer then does a second phase of voting which sends it where it sends an accept n comma v to all acceptors and wins if it receives a majority of votes okay again let's uh, go through it one more time what exactly are we doing first of all we have a proposer who sends a prepare n message as i mentioned the important thing is if you look at three phase commit you are basically the way you are trying to make progress there is to solve a little election problem okay but this itself seems to be as difficult as a consensus problem itself okay it doesn't seem to be any simpler so the idea is to instead of devolving to little election you try to do you let people propose without worrying too much about if other proposers are there in the case of three phase commit you don't do that because there is state that has to be saved okay so it's a slightly different problem that's why it makes sense in three phase commit to try to go through the election okay okay so so a proposer he sends a prepare and message to all acceptors and then acceptor he he either responds with a promise never to accept any proposal with a number less than n that is he is basically saying that i was involved in some things in the past things didn't work out so now that you have come around and said i have a new proposal since nothing in the past whatever i know about has not worked i am going to accept yours but i am also going to say that it's true that i haven't heard from anybody whether the previous proposal got accepted or not okay i did accept but i don't know whether there was any majority i couldn't figure it out so but i but i accepted so i'm going to tell you what i accepted what number i accepted why is this going on is because it's possible that he has accepted a older value but he never heard about the fact that it was accepted the majority actually was, was there but somehow all kinds of failures happened multiple failures happened he never heard about it okay so that's why he is taking a stance that a new th you have, a new thing has come to me i'm going to accept it but at the same time i'm going to tell you that i was involved in some previous round where i accepted this thing but i don't know what really happened to it okay 
So now the proposer here, he receives a response from majority of the acceptors. Then the proposer does a second phase of voting where it sends accept income only. Okay. To all acceptors and means if it is not. Basically what happens is that if all the guys in the majority, they all say that we were all part of an old round. We all accepted this guy. Just that somehow we never heard what happened after that. So this proposal hears from everybody saying that there was a majority in fact for an older proposal. Then this proposer has to take that value and send it back, send it out. If in case it was there was no majority, then he is free to propose a new value. Is this clear? So these are roughly the idea. So we will. Uh, so what are the safety properties that Paxos guarantees? First is it is non-trivial. What does it mean? It means that only proposed values can be learned. Okay. It is trivial in case if everybody says always zero or one. Okay. Okay. It's a trivial thing. So it's not one of those things. Okay. Consistency. At most one value can be learned. That is, two different learners cannot learn different values. Very critical. This is a absolutely critical thing for distributed file systems and for, uh, distributed databases and other kinds of systems which require mutual exclusion sometimes, okay, or often. Okay. So consistency is very important. Liveness. The value C has been proposed, then eventually learner L will some value. Okay. So if some, if sufficient processors remain non faulty, again, there you can see that that is an eventual thing out here. Again, that is why it is a not live, it is not a uh, liveness is not guaranteed here. Okay. So, essentially, if uh, what we are talking about right now is that uh, eventually there will be some value that will be finally accepted if sufficient processors remain non faulty. Okay. That is when. So again, we are going back to saying that we can't really guarantee liveness, but it will, if you wait long enough, it will happen. That's basically what we say. So again, uh, I will go through in some more detail to see exactly what's going on. Hmm? There are various versions of Paxos, and uh, we are going to now talk about the basic version. Okay? For efficiency's sake, we can do a lot more additional things. But we will look at the basic one. Okay. So every time we run this basic Paxos, we can say that each instance of this basic Paxos decides a single output value. Again, this is like a consensus. Basically, we are solving consensus. Okay. So here we have a quorum of acceptors. Okay. So proposer, there are multiple proposers, and there has to be a quorum of acceptors. Okay. Typically, quorum can be majority. And why is this important? If you have a majority. That means that it is always the case that two majorities will always have somebody in common. If you take two majorities, there has to be somebody in common. Okay. That is how information leaks from one round to the other round. Okay. Without this particular aspect, you really do not have any guarantees. So, if you have a quorum, then the basic idea is that in case something was committed in the previous rounds, then two quorums will have a common party. Since there is a common party, when a new proposer comes along, then that information is going to go back to the new proposer that in fact something was committed in the past. Okay. Okay. So basically, this has got two. Uh, Phases, phase one and phase two. Again, th these are somewhat similar to um, what we saw in two-phase commit or three-phase commit. I think it's looking closer to it's elaboration of the three-phase commit, uh, three-phase kind of model. In phase one, there is a proposer P. Let's we can also often call it leaders. Leader sends a prepare message. Proposer N. Okay. And important that the P should know that he can't be sending any uh, message which has the same number as previously sent. It has to be greater than any previous one sent by P himself. 
to Q. Basically, it is sending it to quorum of acceptors. So, there is a bunch of people who are there, he is going to send it to them. Okay. Now, once it has gone there to the quorum acceptors, now it is a turn of the quorum acceptors to promise something. What are they promising? If the number n that has been received in this round is greater than any previous proposal received from any proposer by an acceptor, okay, then acceptor must return a promise to ignore all future proposals less than n. Okay. Again, we discussed it before. It is basically that there are concurrent proposals now. Okay. So, what, is, what it means is that this particular uh, acceptor was involved in some things in the past and we, he is going to now promise that he is not going to accept. If he accepts this particular promise, that means he is not going to, uh, he is going to ignore all other future proposals that could come because they could be delayed. Okay. See, various, there could be, the assumption here is extremely uh, general. Your messages can be duplicated, it can be delayed, it can be arbitrarily delayed, okay, dropped, all kinds of things. So, some previous proposal could come to me now, okay, and uh, that number could be smaller than the one which I have, okay. Okay, so the acceptor must return a promise to ignore all future proposals. Again, you can notice this is similar to in three phase commit. The pre commit phase is basically some kind of a promise, it is basically promising to everybody else that. I am ready to go forward, I want to flush, but I am going to inform to all of you guys that I have agreed, but until I hear from you, I will not flush. Okay? That is basically the point. Something similar is going on here. Okay? If an acceptor accepted a proposal previously, it must include previous proposal number and its balance response. Okay? So, now what has happened is that, again as we discussed before, if this acceptor actually was part of a previous round and he had actually said I am going to accept it, but he somehow has not heard about how it progressed in the past. He has just not heard anything after that. Okay? Then it is possible that by sheer uh, let us say set of circumstances, actually that particular previous thing round actually succeeded and they agreed upon it, it is just that I did not I never heard of it again. Okay? That is the reason why it has to include previous proposal number and its balance response. Okay. Otherwise, the acceptor can ignore the suit proposal, can just drop it on the floor, it does not have to do anything. Okay. So, this is the second part. But then the sec third would be accept request. Okay. If P receives that the proposal receives enough promises from Q, it needs to set a value to its proposal. Okay. The question is what value? So, there is enough quorum now. Okay. There is a quorum. So, it needs to set a value to this proposal. If any acceptors in Q had previously accepted any proposals, P must set value to that of the highest proposal number reported by Q. Okay. If none in Q had accepted any, then P may choose any value. Okay. This one is easy. If none in Q had accepted any, then P may choose any value. That is perfectly fine because there is no, nobody has accepted anything, therefore it is okay. Hmm. okay. So, if any acceptors in Q had previously accepted any proposals, P must set value. Basically, it, it turned out that there was a quorum actually for some previous value, then it is duty bound to put that value. Okay. In that case, it either puts that value or the one which it uh, selected because there was nobody, uh, there was no quorum for any previous values, it sends an accept request to Q with value. Okay. In 2B, basically now the proposer has actually sent accept request n with the value, then all the acceptors, they, if they receive a accept request, okay, must accept it if it has not already promised to only consider proposal greater than n. Okay. So, notice that it must accept it if and only it has not already promised to only consider proposals greater than n. Okay. So, again it is uh, an interlocking aspect like the what we saw in phase 2, phase 1b. Okay. So, 
So, if it accepts then you have to send the value v with an accept message to p and every learner else you can again drop the request completely just ignore it ok. So, this is roughly the access algorithm basically the rounds fail when multiple proposals are there and they send conflicting prepare messages ok and they are all they get inter first each of these requests and uh, each party can decide that ok I cannot I do not want to be part of this round. So, then the rounds fail for that reason because there are not enough people to agree on a particular value ok ok. So, you basically have to restart the, pro the round with a higher proposal number ok. What is interesting about this is that this particular protocol it will survive any failures from anywhere okay, whether it is proposers, acceptors okay, it does not matter who fails how they fail it does not matter at all okay, it can actually survive those things okay, because it gu guarantees that it is uh, if a particular value has been decided upon okay, the majority of people that will be picked up again. Okay. So, there is a consistency condition is guaranteed. And it is very critical because in a if you are talking about locking situations or mutual exclusion situations the consistency aspect is very critical otherwise you have you can have inconsistent system. But the base, basic problem here is that once you have this kind of system you no longer guarantee liveness okay, that is basically the issue ok. I have taken some diagrams from Wikipedia where it uh, gives the same uh, diagrammatic. So, we will look at uh, quickly some of these cases. This is a client which wants a particular service. I should mention, I should mention that uh, uh, if you look at Google, there is something called a chubby service. This is basically the clients, these are guys are making what is the equivalent of chubby calls. Okay. These are basically making a request saying that give me a particular lock, okay. give me a particular value that all of us will agree upon. Okay. That is what this is. So, proposers there are there is one proposer who hears this request they could multiple of these guys ok. This particular hears it and it tells the acceptors right I am going to propose a value 1 do you guys all agree ok. So, it is basically saying prepare 1 and all these parties now say promise 1 and they have not seen anything in the past they have not been a part of any round or some rounds have happened so far back in time that everything has been become quiescent ok. So, we will say null in that case ok there is nothing there ok. So, they are basically saying that I promise that I will uh, let us say uh, I am basically saying that I am willing to go ahead with what you are proposing ok and I do not have any previous things uh, that have all been part of ok. And once all these messages go back the proposer in turn says ok now that I got all the right responses from all three of you guys ok. I will send an accept saying that it has proposal number 1 with a value which I decided. Again here the proposal is deciding value v ok not any of these guys because they all sent none ok. And then once I get that again the acceptors now essentially handshake back saying that we accept what you proposed ok. Here is a basically comment to say accept is basically here saying yes we accept that is what it is ok. And the learners basically keep track of the information. So, that in case it request uh, it can be uh, responded to back to the client later ok. This is roughly the outline of the uh, sequence in case the first round itself is successful ok. It is a very obvious case. But what we really have to worry is what happens if the proposer does something and dies somewhere somewhere here or some acceptors die somewhere or the learners die etcetera. We have to figure out what all happens here. I am not going to go through all the cases, I am just going to go through a few of them. So, let us look at a case where there is a failure acceptor. This is also a simple case, but we say quorum size is 2 acceptors. Similarly, here also client makes a request. And then proposer proposes a number one 
as a proposal number, sends it to all the acceptors and it turns out that one of the acceptors dies. But there is a quorum still because there is a quorum and both these parties basically say that I was not involved in any previous round, I have value null, right. I am willing to go with your proposal number 1, okay, that is what this is. And the proposal finally sends back saying, I decided a value v for you, take it, that is what this is. And here basically what is happening is that the acceptors now having got a value v, they are basically saying back, they are sending saying that yes, I saw your value v, I am going to take v as the value and I am acknowledging it. Okay. And the learners are there to be able to relay the information back to client. So, that in spite of whatever happens here, one of these guys, there is some ad additional levels of redundancy or replication here, okay, which essentially tells the information back to the client. This again is a simple case. What about the failure after doing something, he dies? Again, same story, client makes a request, X says prepare one, and then all the parties here, they all say the promise saying that, yes, I heard you, they were not part of any other previous round. So, we will go with your proposal, the proposal number one, okay. So, they send it back, but while he is trying to send thing back, he dies, okay. So, basically what happens is that uh, this parties do not get this value whatever was accepted. Okay. Okay. So, what he was initiating uh, he was trying to say accept one VA, but somehow it did not uh, get through. Okay. So, because this particular proposal died, okay, you can have some other proposal come in, come in the picture who has seen that somehow there is something not okay in the system. We do not care when it comes up, how it comes up, it can be anything. Okay. He decides to say that uh, I have a new proposal, prepare two, and this is similar to what happened in the previous case. Okay. So, here uh, I have listed this Wikipedia article talks about as a real action, but it can be actually concurrent. Okay, this actually can be somewhere concurrent because this guy can decide to arbitrarily decide something is not working somewhere okay, and decide. Okay. So, we will come to that kind of situation where there are multiple proposers operating at the same time. You can also have slightly more complicated situations. This one is slightly more uh, involved. Here what happens is that just like previously, this client makes a proposal, he says prepare one and all these parties are basically saying yes, I am ready to go with you, but this leader fails, the new guy comes in, he starts the new protocol again saying prepare two and he sends all the second part because uh, all these guys have not heard about what happened to the proposal number one when they say a new proposal, they decide okay, we will go with this new guy, okay. That is what they are doing here, promise to null, 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 because they did not accept anything so far, okay. okay. They just promised that so, okay. So, they send back this particular promise. Now, the old leader can recover and he can try two, okay, because he, he knew about one, so he is going to try two, but if he says prepare for two, then all these acceptors, they can send an saying that we are no longer comfortable what you are proposing. Okay. So, that is what this is that no acknowledgement and then the old leader tries, sorry, what did you do? So, now the old leader tries three, so prepare three is sent out. Now, again these parties, these uh, acceptors have not seen any progress with respect to 2 also for some reason. So, they will now say, okay, I saw a 3, but now I will 
no longer accept anything connected to 2 because that was not going anywhere. So, it now says I am promising to see if 3 can be made to go forward that is what this is. And now the new leader that came in now he says accept, but if he says accept because these guys have already said that they are trying to see how the proposal number 3 is going to fare right. They cannot accept what the new leader has proposed after the first leader died ok. So, that is why there is a knack again here and the new leader tries 4 and he says prepare 4 for some reason again prepare 3 was not going anywhere they will probably decide to go with round 3 ok. So, you can actually have a situation where multiple proposers keep on overtaking each other and uh, it might not really converge that is possible ok. But important thing is that the minute there is any convergence and majority of the guys agree on a value because of the quorum kind of property even if one party agrees on right the other any new quorum that starts they will know about that particular value. It is the same principle that is formed in committees if you look at a government system you will find a lot of committees invariably there is always few one or two parties are always common to certain multiple committees and because of that what happens is that any decisions taken in one committee is always known to other committees also ok. This is a part of the way most uh, uh, governmental systems work. So, let us just again summarize Paxos it is run by a set of proposers they are highly non deterministic they can start anytime they like and without position storage okay. that get a set of acceptors these parties have are determined with persistent story that survives crash because they have to remember what they were doing sometime in the past. If for example, they were part of a particular proposal and they had agreed to commit a particular value right to agree on a particular value they have to remember what they were doing. So, that okay, that is why they need persistent storage. What is interesting about this is, is correct no matter how many simultaneous proposals there are and no matter how often proposers or acceptors fail and recover how slow they are or how many messages are lost delayed or duplicated. Okay. It is a very interesting property, it is non trivial. Okay. What, is in, what is important also is that it terminates this particular protocol. If there is a single proposer for a long enough time during which the leader can talk a majority of proposals twice. Again, you can see why it is twice because we look at the phase as phase 1 and phase 2, you need at least twice. Again, if you remember the, the timed asynchronous model we talked briefly mentioned, there also the model is that it is mostly stable and once in a while unstable ok. So, the thing is if it is stable enough then you can get something you can get forward progress again at something similar is going on here also. May not terminate if there are always too many proposers ok, guarantee termination is anyway not possible mm. ok. So, it turns out you can do something slightly better if you want looking for liveness you can combine Paxos with a <coughs> what is called a sloppy time out based algorithm for choosing a single leader okay. So, basically the basic idea is that uh, if you are able to choose a single leader then that particular person's value can be made to stick ok that is basic idea ok. The sloppy algorithm leaves us with no leader for more or more than one leader at a, at a time because a because of partitions etc it is possible that there can be more than one leader ok. So, for that reason it may not terminate, but if the sloppy algorithm ever produces a single leader for long enough the algorithm will terminate no matter how messy things were ready ok. For example, an example of a sloppy algorithm for choosing a single leader is following. Suppose the proposers have clocks max time to send receive and process messages no ok. Suppose you know these values, then every potential leader that is a broadcast its name. Okay. Now a proposer becomes a leader one round trip of after doing a broadcast, unless it has received a broadcast of bigger name. Basically, what it's doing is everybody broadcasts, and then because it knows about the max time to send, receive, and process messages, no. Okay. It decides after one round trip that it is a leader. So, mostly 
if things are reasonable in the system only one guy will win because everybody is following this protocol that it has if it has received a broadcast of big name it's it says i'm not any anyway, cannot be the leader okay so the biggest guy wins okay but if it so happens that uh, there is some network problems and what not or the system is very unstable then multiple parties can believe that within because i have some kind of max time out right i have some max amount of time here i can decide that okay i am not heard anything bigger than my name therefore i become a leader but it turns out that multiple parties can come to that conclusion and so therefore again you have a situation with multiple proposers with multiple and they have to duel it out okay but if the system is reasonably stable then only one of them will essentially win and you can proceed so in a sense you can uh, slightly make it easier uh instead of the completely open situation with the the paxos where anybody can propose any time if you use this sloppy method you can essentially try if the system is reasonably in a sensible state okay without too many failures it will actually be very good okay. so so these kind of algorithms are used in many large scale storage systems and uh, as i mentioned google has uh, in their uh, for their various clients they have a locking service which i'm told is as paxos within it okay so uh, and many other various other uh, uh, large scale storage systems or uh, web scale systems also use paxos kind of models and uh, so i think i'll conclude here today and i will uh, continue with uh, uh, a similar set of problems but more close to what is called group communication systems where you have to order the messages and this again is quite critical for storage systems because they might want to keep some metadata which is consistent amongst multiple nodes and they have to exchange messages to come to that uh, uh, consensus and if it turns out that if messages sent out go in different orders for two different sets of messages i send then there could be some confusion about what really happened on the receiving side so there is uh, uh, an important aspect in large scale storage systems figure out how to do reliable message delivery so that multiple messages i send they go in the same order or similar types of uh, constraint receptions have to be guaranteed on the receiving side and uh, we look at that one and we'll again connect that particular problem to the kind of problems we saw before yeah. either commit or consensus kind of problems